Hello everyone and welcome to this special WHO drug webinar, Advancing Medicine Safety Through ISO-IDMP, UMC's Perspective. In the next 75 minutes, we will walk you through the IDMP standards and their various components. You will learn how the world is adapting to the standards and we'll also review how Uppsala Monitoring Centre is bringing them to life. I'm Federica Santoro, Communications Officer here at UMC, and your host for the day. I will be joined by my colleagues, Marlin, Olaf, Jenny and Marilina, and they will cover different aspects of the IDMP standards. At the end of the webinar, all speakers will be available for a Q&A session, so stay until the end and submit your questions as we go along. It's very easy to do that, just visit slido.com, type in hashtag IDMP, and then just start writing your question in the chat. After the webinar, we'll make handouts and a recording of the session available. We will also ask you to fill in a short survey to give us your thoughts on the event. But that was all for the housekeeping announcements. Now let's step into the world of IDMP. First up, to welcome you all and set the stage, is UMC Director Peter Jelmström. Hello, I'm Peter Jelmström, Director of Uppsala Monitoring Center. And it's a pleasure to welcome you to this webinar. The International Organization for Standardization, ISO, has developed a suite of five different standards for identification of medicinal products, IDMP. This represents a game-changing development in the world of pharmacovigilance. IDMP is designed to establish a common language, facilitating effective exchange of vital medicinal product data across the entire drug development lifecycle. At UMC, patient safety is our main driving force, and it is also the driving force behind ISO IDMP. By enhancing a harmonized data exchange, ISO IDMP enhances our ability to identify, evaluate, and mitigate risks associated with medicinal products. At Uppsala Monitoring Center, we firmly believe in the need for collaboration, and ISO IDMP offers us a unique opportunity to strengthen global collaboration and information exchange worldwide. By adopting a standardized approach to data sharing, we can transcend geographical boundaries and leverage collective insights to improve pharmacovigilance practices worldwide. At UMC, we are committed to support the implementation of ISO IDMP standards and leverage their benefits to advance pharmacovigilance practices. During the webinar, I hope you will get a chance to learn more about the current status of IDMP and how various global stakeholders, including us here at UMC, are collaborating to implement these standards. Please enjoy the webinar. Thanks for that, Peter. As you all heard, the IDMP standards are a game-changing development. By establishing a common language, they will allow us to exchange vital information across the entire life cycle of medicines. But how will it all work? Here to break it down for us is Malin Fladvad, head of Who Drug, Pro Who Drug Product Portfolio at UMC. Hi, my name is Malin Fladvad working at UMC with Who Drug and IDMP. And today I will tell you about IDMP, its use cases and ongoing implementations. Many of you might already know about ISO IDMP, but let us start with the basics. IDMP stands for Identification of Medicinal Products, and it's a suite of five ISO standards that were released in 2012 and describe how to standardize information and create identifiers for medicinal products and the pharmaceutical products, as well as substances used in products, 
the pharmaceutical dose forms with units of presentations and route of administration, as well as strength and units of measurement. Implementing the ISO and IDMP standards globally would facilitate the unique identification of a medicinal product in the context of pharmacovigilance and the safety of medications throughout the world, both in communication between persons as well as in IT systems. The identifiers defined by ISO will be a combination of global and regional identifiers, where UMC is involved in the global PHPID as well as the global substance identifier. The identifiers for the complete medicinal product and packaged product will, however, be created nationally. In each country where the medicinal product is approved, the local regulatory authority assigns the national medicinal product identifier and the package identifier, since they are identifiers based on the size of packaging for that particular country. For example, in one country, the medicinal product may have 50 tablets in its package, where in another country, the package may contain 100 tablets. So even though the MP IDs and the package IDs will differ from country to country, the global PHP ID and the substance identified will remain the same for all countries. The PHP ID will be created in four different levels, depending on the granularity of the information available, and of course based on the standards on the previous slide. The first level is generated using the unique global substance identifier only. The second level is generated using the substance identifier in combination with strain. And the third level is generated using the substance identifier in combination with dose form. And then the last fourth level is generated using all three standards. One of the clever things with the IDMP standards, or more specifically the IDMP identifiers, is that they help identify products that are equivalent to each other disregarding on the jurisdiction they are approved in. So in this example, you can see salbutamol that is marketed in many countries where the domestic product names vary. The level of detail on the package may also differ, as in this example where both salbutamol and salbutamol sulfate is used on the package. Products in this example do contain the same active ingredient and they have the same pharmaceutical dose form and strength. So by linking equivalent product in different countries to a unique global PHP ID for this specific pharmaceutical product, namely salbutamol sulfate with a strength of 100 micrograms per actuation and the dose form suspension for inhalation, it is possible to conclude that these products are equivalent to each other showing the great benefit of the global PHP ID. The PHP ID becomes the medicinal product's common denominator from country to country, regardless of where it is prescribed, dispensed and used. Implementing a large set of new standards is challenging. So what is the overall benefit of IDMP? Pharmacovigilance was one of the first discussed use cases for IDMP, since it requires precise identification of medicinal products and is often beneficial to pool data for analysis from different countries. But there is a need for harmonization of medicinal product information in the entire life cycle from development to product removal. Some of the benefits with implementing IDMP on a global level would be in the improved data quality to have an accurate single data source leading to reduced or shared cost and greater productivity. It would also be easier to share information on a regional and global level and compare products across regions. IDMP implementation could also facilitate global supply chain and make it easier to identify and solve medicinal product shortages. So how will the process for pharmacovigilance and UMC be affected. Today we use food drug in most of our PV systems, from reporting through mobile apps and industry reporting and Vigiflow, to identification of Vigibase 
and publication of data in DigiLice and DigiAccess. Moving forward, we envision that the IDMP identifiers will be used by countries in reporting analysis of ICSRs, and we will then need to adapt our systems. To make this process as easy as possible, we envision that WhoDrug, with an extension of the global PHP ID and global substance ID, will be used. Having more detailed information on the medicines reported could improve analysis and better ensure information about the active ingredient, the dose taken by the patient, and facilitate identification of specific forms of a product that cause problems. So how is IDMP being implemented in different regions? US FDA are already using standards and terminologies compatible to most of the concepts presented in the IDMP standards, namely the medicinal product identification, where they're using the national drug code, substance identification, where they have a regional uni code, the units of measure, where UCOM is used, and they are also a leading partner in implementation of global IDMP together with EMA. For EMA, the ISO IDMP standards are mandated by the EU legislation, and EMA are implementing the ISO IDMP standards in a phased program for substances, products, organizations, and referentials. And they also use the HL7 FIRE standard to exchange and publication of data concerning medicinal products for human and veterinary use. Swiss Medic in Switzerland is currently evaluating targets and priorities for the implementation of IDMP in connection with development of their internal systems. For the implementation of IDMP, Swiss Medic will align as much as possible with the EU requirements, but will also take into account some specific local requirements. Health Canada is internationally engaged in the work for a global substance regis registry and IDMP. And under existing projects, Health Canada is working on accurately mapping pharmaceutical and biological substances to the UNI global identifier. They have also undertaken other projects to accommodate the IDMP data model for health products. Other regulators, such as Anvisa and MHRA are also pursuing IDMP implementations, looking into adaptation of their system and data. There are not so many guidelines on the use of IDMP today, but the Unicom project, an EU-driven project for improved patient safety and better healthcare, they are focusing on implementation of the IDMP standards, both for regulatory purposes, for global pharmacovigilance, for advancing the cross-border digital health services, in particular e-prescribing, and also for better healthcare for all, so including the public health services, clinical research, data analysis, and artificial intelligence applications. In Unicom, there are several resources developed, such as the IDMP in a capsule document, and there are several community of expertise webinars and public deliverables that are available on their website. So in March 2023, the US FDA published a guidance for industry that supports the development and the implementation of ISO IDMP. The guidance is available at the link on the slide and describes how FDA is working with stakeholders on implementation of global IDMP. So how far have we come with the implementation of global IDMP? Since the first version of the ISO IDMP standards in 2012, there has been a lot of activity within both USFDA and AMA towards implementation. FDA created the Global Substance Registration System, the GSRS, for substance information. And this system is now also used within the European Union to harmonize European substances for all the 27 member states. UMC are also using the same system for substance information needed for creation of the global PHP ID. EMA and FDA 
also kicked off a formal collaboration on IDMP in 2019, and FDA collaborated with UMC on a first pilot for PHP ID in 2021, which eventually led to the formation of the Global IDMP Working Group. So the Global IDMP Working Group was organized and chartered, followed several recommendations from a meeting in 2019 in Geneva about IDMP implementation. The initial charter members include the EMA, USFDA, and UMC. And nowadays, additional members have also joined, such as Swiss Medic, Health Canada, Anvisa, uh, the INN group within WHO, as well as IFPMA, representing the industry. So GIDIWIG is an international organization with the mission to conduct and report on projects leading to the establishment of a framework for the global implementation of ISO IDMP standards and the maintenance of the global identifiers and systems. To make sure that the robust framework for PHP ID operations based on the ISO standards are developed, a worldwide collaboration between regulators and relevant experts all across the globe is pivotal. In addition to FDA and EMA, there are additional regulators such as Vismedic and Anvisa participating in the effort and standards organizations that manage the terminologies used for IDMP, such as EDQM for dose form and Kew Garden regarding plant substances used in natural medicine. There is close communication with the ISO TC215 Workgroup 6 that developed and maintained the ISO IDMP standards and the European project for IDMP implementation, UNICOM. Another important player in global implementation of IDMP is IPRP, the International Pharmaceutical Regulators Program. To ensure that we in Gidewig would reach our goals to identify and develop consensus on processes, best practices and operating model for the maintenance of global identifiers for marketed medicinal products, five different projects have been running to develop and verifying the process and the business rules for global PHP ID. The five products are for the different parts of the PHP ID, so for the global dose form identification, the global substance identification, strength definitions, uh, the global PHP ID maintenance operating model, and also an H7 fire for IDMP. The challenges with the data harmonization that we have seen is mainly due to the diversity of the data due to different descriptions and terminologies used in different jurisdictions globally. This makes an automatic assignment and global ID generation in principle impossible since the description of the different elements such as substance, dose form, strength and unit will lead to different identifiers. The substances themselves are alone a big complexity, both for some simpler chemical molecules with different hydration levels to proteins and vaccines where the substance itself can be very complex and require strict definitions. The strength and the dose form usually also differ, and as you can see in this example for diclofenac cream, where the strength is expressed in different ways for all of these packages, where the product is really equivalent. As a part of the Global IDMP Working Group projects, we are developing the processes and the suggested business rules for Global PHP ID. Gidewig has been working with a number of datasets from different countries, including US, Brazil, Belgium and Norway, where the Gidewig pharmacist expert team, consisting of pharmacists from FDA and UMC, are validating each product by reviewing the SMPC or labeling information to identify the substance, assign a global harmonized dose form expression, and consistently express strength and identify the correct unit. In many cases, additional information from the SBC are also needed, such as information on the product container, dosing, and administration. The proposed PHP ID generation process is expected to apply for single requests as well as for entire national datasets, 
when a country is starting to use the global identifiers. The business rules for global PHP ID creation, as well as the operating model that you can see here, has been developed in collaboration with the Global ID Inclusion Working Group, consisting of the experts from many different countries, as I mentioned before. So if a pharmaceutical product lacks the required PHP ID, a search can be made in the PHP ID repository. And if no PHP ID is found, a request is made for a new identifier. The pharmaceutical product information is then validated according to the business rules using relevant data from local registries and market authorization holders. If the validation rules cannot be applied, UMC will consult with the WHO International Expert Working Group. If the validation then is approved, UMC will generate the PHP ID at all the relevant levels, and the code will be shared with the requesters and published in a repository. The demo versions of the different applications supporting the operating model for global PHP ID are now up and running, and here is a picture showing the request application for global PHP ID. A new PHP ID can be requested either as a single request or in a batch, and the requester will need to submit information about the medicinal product they need to get the PHP ID, including the information on the trade name, active ingredients, local dose form, strength, and unit. The data is then validated internally by UMC pharmacists identifying the harmonized expression that will form the foundation of the global PHP ID. When the PHP ID is ready, it will be published with the accompanying harmonized information. And here is a snapshot of the publishing interface where you can see the PHP ID on all four levels, the global substance identifier generated, the substance strength, and the harmonized dose form. If we look at the plan moving forward for Global PHP ID, we are during 2023 working in the Global IDMP Working Group on the definition of the operating model and the business rules for Global PHP ID, and are in parallel developing the applications needed for the operating model, including request validation, generation, and publication of the Global PHP ID. In Q4 of this year, we plan for an end-to-end -end testing of the operating model, testing a number of datasets from different countries to verify a number of use cases for the global PHP ID. The plan is to be able to go live during 2024 and start onboarding a number of countries to generate the first global PHP ID. Thank you for listening to this introduction on IDMP. Looking forward to talking to you later. Thank you, Marlin, for that overview. Marlin will be joining the Q&A session at the end, so if you have any questions for her, do post them on slido.com with the hashtag IDMP. And thanks to those of you who have already submitted questions. Keep them coming. So now we're going to take a closer look at how substances, dose form and strength are defined in the IDMP world. Here's an interview I recently recorded with two of my colleagues, UMC's substance expert Olaf Lagerlund and terminology specialist Jenny Clint. Enjoy the conversation. Hi, Olaf and Jenny, and welcome to this IDMP interview. Hi. Hi. So today we will explain the IDMP standards in a little more detail, and we will focus specifically on the PHPID, Pharmaceutical Product Identifier, and its components. And we'll start with you, Olaf. What is a PHPID and how do you build one? Well, uh, thanks for having us here, Federica. To start with, uh, the global PHP IDs uh, that we talk about, that are basically similar products that we group together uh, based on the active ingredient, dose form, and strength. And these are based on the 
ISO standard for the pharmaceutical product ID, the 11616. There are different levels of the PHP ID. And depending on what kind of information you have, um, you can combine these um, aspects to produce a certain level. For instance, if you only have substance and dose form, but not the strength, then you would have a PHP ID level three. But the most important aspect is to harmonize the products globally. So if two products are the same, they should have the same PHP ID, even if they are described in different ways in different countries. Thanks for that introduction. So from what you said, the most complete version of a PHP ID will include information on active ingredients, dose form and strength. And I suggest we look at these components one by one so that our listeners can understand a bit more uh, of each one. Why don't we start with the active ingredient or global substance identifier as it's known in IDMP jargon. Why do we need that standard? Well, in order to get this harmonization on PHP ID to see that they actually contain the same active ingredients, we need to know that that ingredient is unique so you can so you don't accidentally get two uh, of the same thing in a PHP ID. Uh, and the global substance identify is um, how you describe and it can be uniquely assigned to all types of substances used in medicinal products. Right, but how do you make sure each identifier is unique? Because there are so many medicinal substances out there and already so many ways to describe them. How do you make sense of it all? You follow the standard. It's the ISO 11238 in the case of the substances, which have information on how you should describe each substance type and the minimal fields for that. Uh, what you need uh, for definition. Uh, like for a chemical, you need a chemical structure and a name. And then depending if it's more information, you could have that as well. But you can imagine going through this, like a chemical structure is quite easy, but when you get to more complex sets of uh, substances, you will need some kind of way to keep track of all of this. And there we started to use a re substance registration system. SRS, uh, that has been created to handling uh, substances according to the IDMP standards. Uh, it's an open source software uh, that was originally created by the US FDA about 10 years ago. And now it's used by both the US FDA and EMA as examples. Uh, and another nice thing with having like the co a common system that we use the same system across the globe, uh, is that it will be easier for different stakeholders to exchange the data uh, in a structured way between uh, the different stakeholders. So we've covered now the active ingredient. Why don't we move over to the second PHP ID component, the dose form? And now it's your turn, Jenny, to tell us more about that. What is the dose form and why is it so important to include it in the standards? The dose form is a physical manifestation of how the medicine is presented. Olaf mentioned harmonization before, and that is something we work with a lot for the dose form when validating products. Today, the expression of dose form can vary globally. There are differences in granularity or the level of detail, and that makes it difficult to map terminologies from one region to another. For the global PHP IDs, we are using four characteristics to describe the dose form. These are the basic dose form, the administration method, the intended site, and the release characteristic. And uh, they all come from EDQM, the European Directorate for the Quality of Medicines and Healthcare. Okay, so four dose form characteristics, but could you give us some examples of them so we understand a bit more what they're about? Yes, of course. I can start with the basic dose form. That is a generalized description of the dose form. It could be, for example, a tablet, a solution or a cream. The administration method describes how the product is intended to be administered. For example, swallowing, injection, or application. Intended site is the place in the body where 
the product should be administered. It could be oral, nasal, or parenteral. And finally, the release characteristic describe how long it takes for the active ingredient to be available after administration. The release characteristic for an immediate release formulation will be conventional, while for a prolonged release formulation, it will be prolonged. To find the information required to assign the correct characteristic, we use the dose form stated for the product, but that is not always enough. Often we need to look in different places in the summary of product characteristic or the product label because the data is not always structured and the similar terms may have different definitions. Also, in PHPID, we use the administrable dose form, and when that is different from the manufactured dose form, we need to find it out. For example, if we have an effervescent tablet, you will need to dissolve or disperse it in water before taking it, so the administrable dose form is then not a tablet, it's a solution or a suspension. So there's a lot of information to collect and make sense of. And now moving on to the third and last PHPID component, the strength of a medicinal product. Tell me about that one. The strength is a measurement of something that is weight up or an efficacy measure based on assays. Same as for the dose form, the strength can be stated differently in different jurisdictions, but again, Regardless of how the product is described in the product label or summary of product characteristics, the same product should get the same global PHP IDs, so also the strength information needs to be harmonized to get consistent identifiers. There's a theme emerging, obviously, lots of information described in different ways that needs to be organized and uh, harmonized. Uh, but I was wondering, when you said that the strength can be described differently in different places, how does that even come about? Well, it could be different units used for the same active ingredient. For one substance, the unit could be, for example, milligram or international unit. For another substance, it could be viral particles or infectious units. This can vary between regions, but also in the same region. Another source of variation is if the strength is given as a total amount in the container or as a concentration. Some cases are more straightforward, for example, with tablets or capsules, there the strength is the amount in the tablet or capsules. It could be 500 milligram or something like that but other cases are more challenging. I would say that solutions and suspensions and these type of liquid preparations generally require a thorough investigation. There, the strength is sometimes the total amount in the container, but it could also be expressed in percent or milligram per milliliter, or it could be milligram per five milliliter or per drop or per activation if it's a meter dose. So that sounds quite complex, and I can imagine there's a lot you have to dissect and decide upon. How do you harmonize these differences then? To harmonize this, we have developed three patterns for how to express the strength for PHPID. The patterns are three different groupings that, depending on what kind of product it is, define whether the strength should be expressed as a total amount, the presentation strength, or concentration for example, milligram per milliliter, or if it should be a delivery rate over time, such as milligram per hour. The pattern framework and the business rules developed in Gitwig are supporting us in creating PHP IDs that are consistent and according to the standards. Olaf, we're going back to you now. Um, I know there are a bunch of different names and codes out there to classify medicinal substances. So why do we need new substance identifiers? I guess this is something a few of our listeners might be wondering. Yes, uh, I can imagine that, Frederica. Uh, there are, and let me start with that usually when we talk about substances, we want to use a name and not the code. The code is more for the machine readable and uh, to have it as a unique identity because names can get translated and can be misspelled and so on. Uh, and the foremost name from an international point of view what we use is the uh, international non-proprietary name from WHO. 
and most substances I would say have such a name which have defined and it really makes our work so much more easier because a lot of the information is already there and it's well defined but they don't really have all substances covered really they don't have for instance inactivated vaccines and when it comes to salt forms of substance like ibuprofen and potassium uh, that has what you call a modified INN. You take the INN and you add the salt variant to it and put them together. And this is a smart system that allows for a lot of names to be used, even if they don't have to apply for a new INN the whole time. But you still need an identifier for that salt. So there are some things like that. Then we also have some regional identifiers or country-specific identifiers, like for example, the UNI, the Unique Ingredient Identifier, that is assigned by the FDA, uh, the US FDA, or like the Substance Management Service ID, better known as the SMS ID by the European Medicine Agencies, the EMA. Uh, they would cover very, a lot of substances, uh, but they are not global and they couldn't really take in a request from a third country, for instance, and so on. So that's in order to have a global PHP ID, we will have a global, we need a global substance identifier as well. Mm. And global standards obviously call for global collaboration. And this is an ambitious project, obviously, where uh, many organizations have to collaborate because no single one can do it on their own. Uh, and in fact, there are many stakeholders involved in trying to bring the IDMP standards to life. Why has Uppsala Monitoring Center decided to join these efforts then? Well, as you pointed out, uh, the development of the like the IDMP standards as a whole, and then now we're only like talking about the small subset of the IDMPs, or small and small, but the PHP IDs and the GSIDs. It's still not a one-man show. It's need this collaborative effort, and by doing that together in the GIDWIG, the Global IDMP Working Group. Uh, we try to help out there. And one of the reasons why UMC is involved is our expertise as a WHO collaborating center uh, for the International Drug Monitoring Program. And that is the pharmacovigilance program uh, for advancement on a global scale. So we have the experience from that. And we also have the experience from our uh, developing our WHO drug global dictionary. And we've done that for many years, where we have knowledgeable and experienced co-workers, application and processes surrounding this area. And it's not exactly the same thing as the PHP ID. The PHP IDs are not the dictionary, but the validate that the data validation around these has many similarities, how we look at uh, building the PHP ID and what we bring into the Who Drug Dictionary. However, it is in, like Jenny pointed out before, with these rules that it's the GIDWIG that we discuss together with these other stakeholders and set the business rules how to implement um, the PHP ID when we do that. So we execute on what the GIDWIG decides, one could say. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to explain the details of PHPID standards to our audience and best of luck with everything that will come with IDMP development. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks again to Olaf and Jenny for that. They will also be joining the Q&A session at the end, so if you have any questions, now's the time to post them on Slido. But first, we have time for one more presentation. This one will be led by UMC's product manager, Marilina Castellano. She will explain how IDMP implementation is going to affect the Hoodra Global Dictionary that many of you are probably using. Over to you, Marilina. Dear all, good morning and uh, good afternoon. 
My name is Marilina Castellano and uh, I'm working as a product manager for uh, Hoodrug at UMC. I'm a pharmacist as background with a specialization in uh, pharmacovigilance and uh, regulatory affairs. I'd like to express my gratitude towards the audience, you, who has kindly allocated the time to listen in to this presentation, which will focus on how the ISO IDMP standard and Hoodrug come together. As you know, and as we have heard from previous presentations today, UMC is actively promoting ISO IDMP and collaborating with many stakeholders to make IDMP implementation a reality. At the same time, we are working hard to prepare our existing systems and processes to provide global pharmaceutical identifiers, PHPAD, while also supporting GIDWIG development of business rules for both the GSID, the Global Substance Identifier, as well as the PHPAD. And of course, as the provider of Hoodra Global, we will continue to develop it for our users, but with the added benefits of IDMP integration. Global PHPDs are a great tool that allows to identify equivalent pharmaceutical products. And therefore, when combined with medicinal product information, they achieve their full potential. On this slide, we can see how pharmaceutical products compare to medicinal products. For medicinal products, we have additional information such as the trade name, the country of sales, and marketing authorization holders. Here is a rough timeline for our efforts to ensure ISO ADMP compliance in Hoodra Global. In our efforts to develop support for both global pharmaceutical products identifiers and global substance identifiers, we will continue to collaborate closely with regulators to support their requirements. And of course, we're also collaborating with many other stakeholders to understand the needs and expectations. The discussions held so far have resulted in a prototype, which I will present to you in the next slide. So if you have any feedback, please share them with us. And uh, I also would like to stress that even after the launch of this IDMP compliant hood drug, the unmodified hood drug global will be available in parallel. Now about the prototype. Hood drug contains different information hierarchical levels for each medicinal product. That includes information levels limited to drug name, ingredients and ATC codes, and information levels based on a country of sales, marketing authorization order, pharmaceutical forms and strength. And this is to allow accurate drug coding that can reflect what was actually reported on an ICSRs. Who drug will be extended with global substance identifiers and pharmaceutical product identifiers. And as you can see on this slide, pharmaceutical product identifiers will be assigned depending on the level of information available to a particular record. We can imagine a future where who drug users will be able to browse the dictionary content and easily search and retrieve both pharmaceutical product identifiers and global substance identifiers. On this slide, we have tried to envision what this experience might look like in Hoodrug Insight, which is our dictionary browser. First, you would access the Hoodrug C3 format data to see the different levels of pharmaceutical product identifiers for a specific product 
you are interested in. And you could also be presented with the inputs that were used to create a specific pharmaceutical product identifier. And while trying to envision how an ADMP compatible version of a food drug should look like, we're of course considering what other improvements would be beneficial to our users. Up for discussion is what standard for those form information should we maintain. Currently, we use the new form codes ephemera standard. These are important questions that must be discussed with the users. And we hope you will reach out to us with any feedback. Our hypothesis for the prototype is that ephemera will be replaced with EDQM basic dose form and unit of presentation. Additionally, domestic dose forms will be presented for each product depending on the country of sales. And here I have included examples for Norway, Brazil and USA. For Norway here is represented the appropriate pharmaceutical dose form from the EDQM terminology. The standard for dose form ultimately will impact ease of drug coding, compliance with regulatory recommendations when submitting safety reports, and effective analysis. Our vision is to provide a tool to achieve precise and accurate drug reporting in ICSRs with support in domestic language. Enable exchange and the submission of harmonized medicinal product information internationally. And lastly, make it possible to retrieve medicinal information so to see the global picture. And with that, I now would like to conclude my presentation. And thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Marilina. I'm looking forward to the audience's questions too. And on that note, if you have any last minute queries, there's still time to submit them. You know the drill by now, go to slido.com and use the hashtag IDMP. And now it's finally time to welcome all speakers back on screen for the Q&A session. There you are. So there's been a few questions coming in through the, throughout the webinar. Let's start with this one at the top. How should a country proceed if they are interested in starting IDMP implementation? I guess that one's for you, Malin. Yes, uh, thank you, Federica. So if a country uh, wants to start from, from the beginning, I think, uh, of course, the obvious thing is to dive into the standards. Um, uh, try to look at them, what does it mean uh, for your current terminologies that you're using in your region, uh, and also to try to get some um, training uh, for your staff that you think should work with IDMP. Uh, and there are organizations that provide this training in specific to, to regulators, but also to industry. Then I think one important thing is to join uh, the IPRP, the International Pharmaceutical Regulators Program. They have a working group for IDMP where there is a forum where regulators can exchange information on IDMP. They can get advice and they can use the guidance and checklist that have been developed by this group. Um, I think one can also reach out to the countries that are currently working on the IDMP implementation and uh, to see how have they proceeded uh, with this work. Thank you. There's a question about clinical trials. Uh, the person writes, I'm not sure I understand the impact of IDMP on clinical, at the clinical trial level. Will this replace coding with who drug or be a part of the hierarchy? 
Um, so maybe you start, Marlena, and I tie in if we need to. Oh no, sorry. Go ahead, Marlene. Uh, well, um, so um, the primary use case uh, for IDMP is now in the post-marketing setting, and that's what has been discussed uh, for many years. Uh, but meaning that we are in the post-marketing setting and are discussing ICSRs, uh, there is also an impact on the cl clinical trials and, and some of the reports there. Um, so I think for this kind of um, setting, I think IDMP will complement WHO-DRAG. So um, um, the new global identifiers uh, will be an addition to WHO-DRAG, so you can actually use both, uh, depending on if you are more interested in um, what's actually on the package, which is mainly what WHO-DRAG described, or if you need a, a more scientific description, as IDMP is doing. So that would be my answer. Thank you for that. Marilina, do you want to add anything? No, no, no. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Thank you, Marilina. There's a bunch of questions related to who drugs, so we'll throw them your way in a second. But first, there's a question for Jenny, perhaps. Um, if you have the same substance, stre the same substance strength, etc., but different containers or different packaging, would that be different PHPIDs? Um, preservatives can be used in a non-single dose container. This listener asks. Mm, yes, uh, if they have the same strength and are used the same way, but it's just the container that differs, then they will get the same. PHPID. Uh, PHPID only consider active ingredients and a preservative are not considered active in that perspective. Okay, thank you. Simple and straightforward. Um, Marilina, here's one, one of many who draw questions for you, I assume. Let's start with this one. How will IDMP change the who drug coding process? Thank you. Um, well, changes, of course, when, uh, when we talk about new standards, of course, the first question is what changes will come and impact us and our processes? So it's, it's a great question and uh, we need to think about seriously and collect feedback from users. And uh, of course, we need to say that changes will ultimately depend on regulators in each country. And regulators' expectations might come in the form of coding guidances um, around how to code to PHPID identifiers, uh, requiring accurate and detailed level of coding. Now, surely from the medical coder perspective, you will still face, for example, in the post-marketing surveillance aspect of coding, you will still in face drug verbatims and other drug information, such as the route of, of administrations, uh, the pharmaceutical form. And um, you will still want an easy way to code to that information and uh, find a match uh, for that for what it was reported in the ICSR um, and uh, easily retrieve uh, the most appropriate uh, PHPID pharmaceutical uh, identifier. And um, we want to, from the Hoodra perspective, we want to, of course, continue support uh, Hoodra users in, in doing so. And so it will be, um, we're now working, as I showed in my presentation on, on a prototype, uh, where a who drug will be extended. And I think there is, um, there is a question about that. Actually, we will get to that one later, but uh, it will be a discussion between the users, um, the regulators, and so trying to com be compliant with the regulator's expectations, as well as uh, um, have provide something that is user-friendly and easy for the users to use and implement. I hope that address your question. Thank you. And yes, there are a few related questions. Let's begin with 
this one. Will there be a new dictionary within WhoDrug? Will the B3 or C3 dictionary be able to provide all necessary information to obtain the PHP ID? And I saw a question further down on the WhoDrug B3 format. They're asking if that will undergo some changes. Perhaps you could take these two together. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for, for the questions again from the audience. It's great when the audience is so engaged and actively participating. So, right, like I have shown in my, in my presentation, um, we are working on an um, extended uh, Hoodra Global Dictionary. So the idea is to take the Hoodra Global Dictionary and extend it to include ISO IDMP identifiers, both the global substance identifier as well as the pharmaceutical product identifiers. And uh, uh, like we have learned today from Malin, uh, um, all the levels, right? One, two, four. And um, I think um, that will be uh, <laughs> the answer to this question. And uh, let me read it once again. Um, Yes, I think that's that's it. And the changes um, it will be as I shown to the um, in my presentation the changes to the B3 format or rather the impact maybe was about how will the PHPD impact uh, the drug code or the SDG, and um, the drug code will be retained, so the drug code will still be there, and. Um, when it comes to the SDG, which stands for, uh, those of you that are not familiar with it, standardized drug groupings, uh, today they are uh, based on active ingredients, combinations of active ingredients based on inclusion criteria. And uh, uh, amongst the panelists we have, Ulof, that is the absolute SDG expert. <laughs> so if you want to add anything here, Ulof, but uh, of course, when uh, we will include PHPADs uh, in, the, in a who drug, that will open up a uh, possibility for new ways of grouping drugs. And of course, depending on the, on the use cases that will arise. So, um, but what I want to communicate and emphasize is that um, this uh, extended version of Hoodrug is a prototype and it's based on uh, discussions we have had with different stakeholders. And of course, you're most welcome to reach out to us, send us an email and let us know your opinion. And we want to know what you think and when we will release this extended version of uh, Hoodrug, we will maintain in parallel the B3 and the C3 format. I hope that was um, exhaustive. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I think we now covered three questions in one. That was great. So you covered the B3, C3 and the drug code and SDGs. So I think we captured it all. Uh, Olaf, did you want to add anything on while we are on the SDGs before we move on to the next question? Uh, no, I just can um, emphasize what Marlena said that it will demand a bit of um, a bit of different groupings compared to what the SDGs are today, but that doesn't mean that we can't develop them or at least we need to look into the possibilities that this can open up maybe for better ones or as a complement I would say to base it more on the PHP ID than maybe on the substance alone so it uh, I'm looking forward to it and with interest <laughs> even if it's work great thanks um, there's a question on formulations and edqm let's see who wants to take that one maybe this is for marilina again um, so are we planning to map the formulations and who drug to the edqm formulations and if so by when uh, yes uh, thank you again and um, like I have, I think I have, yes, I have a slide about this in my presentation too. And that is um, basically, um, now it's hard without having the slides in front, um, perhaps to remember, but the handout is available, uh, right, Federica, if you want to go back to that slide. 
So, so far, based on um, discussions with different stakeholders um, and also in order to facilitate, of course, compliance uh, with uh, um, ICH uh, countries and that expect uh, EDQM forms to be utilized, um, then in WHO drug, based on the current prototype, um, the hypothesis is that current WHO drug um, pharmaceutical forms information will be replaced with uh, um, basic dose forms from the EDQM uh, dose form terminology. Now, I'm not sure if you are, probably you are very familiar with EDQM and that's why you're asking. So basic dose form is one set uh, of dose forms within the terminology together with the unit of presentations. And, uh, and also, um, in addition to, this, um, to these elements, uh, um, our intention and ambition is also to include uh, domestic dose forms. Like we have learned from the other expert here, Jenny, uh, there are uh, different terminologies in different regions across uh, the world, right? So um, in Brazil, they might be using their own regional dose form, while in US they have the other, another set of um, terminologies and so on for those forms. So the idea is to present the relevant um, those, form, um, those forms for the appropriate terminology applicable to uh, that country as well. And so yes, um, there will be EDQM forms in WhoDrag. And I hope that answers your question. And if you have any feedback, please uh, send us an email, uh, hoodrag at who-umc.org. <laughs> Thanks, Marilina. Olaf, we're going back to you, I think, because there's a couple of questions on substances. So first of all, will there be PHPIDs also for herbals, umbrella terms, and NOS entries? Uh... Yes, a uh, very good question, thank you. Uh, we'll divide it in two parts. The herbals will have PHPIDs or the products that herbals contain because herbal will are defined by the ISO standard for substances, so you can define them and um, in that sense. But for umbrella terms and NOS entries, NOS stands for uh, not otherwise uh, specified, so it can be like any vitamin. Since they're not specified and you can't really define them in that sense, they can't get the global substance ID and then they can't really get the PHP ID. So these types of substances that collects it, it's, um, it's more um, of a concept type and won't be used and you don't really... Um, so those will be harder. At least for now, it's not. Maybe it will be developed further on in the future how to handle those, but uh, not now. But herbals, it will be uh, possible. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And thanks to the audience for all these interesting questions. Um, there's another one uh, for you, Olaf. Where mm -hmm. does IDMP address non medicinal ingredients like preservatives, liposomes? Is it in MPID? Yes, uh, that will be my uh, guess that it will be described there, or it will be described there, and it will be on the, uh, the when you have a much more detailed level, because the PHP ID is, like we said before, it's like harmonization and grouping in a way of similar or equivalent medicines that are very like each other, but the the that we talked about also with active ingredient and the non-active ingredient like the uh, come back here with the preservatives and some of these are quite tricky to actually say or is it uh, active or non-active and that can also be different between regulators and uh, if you have a case like that then we take it uh, if we discover and trying to do this, we talk about with experts and see how it is and try to compare and get to a consensus. <laughs> so it will be the PHPID at least will be treated the same way globally, even if different regulators do different things. 
and then no real right and wrong but you have to come to something uh, work with uh, some hypothesis and see if that works find a working solution yes yes thank you um on to the next question till when end-to-end -end pharmacovigilance systems should start using idmp for submissions to regulatory bodies across the world marlin is that one for you perhaps yes sure well it all comes down to the regulatory expectations again uh, we're repeating that quite often today uh, but i think in some regions like in europe they are large efforts ongoing uh, with harmonizing uh, the data and they're also looking into submissions um, uh, and approvals using um, IDMP standard for the medicinal product that's in the in the data. Um, so I think it will come, but um, um, I think you'll have to monitor each region to see how their roadmap look like for the IDMP implementation. Thanks. And I guess you could take the next question as well. It's also related to C3 that we discussed earlier. With C3 already collecting route of administration, um, um, do, yes, manufacturing, uh, manufacturer and those, do you think more regulators will shift to C3 over B3? Well, I think in, in post-marketing, uh, I mean, that's what we are seeing now, that there are some countries that move over to three, C3 to get more granular information. And, and like, like what is pointed out in this question, uh, most elements are there in, in who drug. Um, you have the substance that is in many cases defined very similarly. Uh, it's mainly for the complex uh, substances like the vaccines where they are slightly different uh, and as Marlena described uh, the dose forms uh, well in Hudrag you have a different terminology there but the basic idea is the same um, so I think it could be a good step and you could actually even use the MPID that is defined in in Hudrag. So if you have the MPID on the most specific specific level, it's pretty similar to to IDMP. Uh, but I think um, one really needs to consider this carefully because you know that each um, change of dictionary has a, a very big impact. So there needs to be discussion with all the stakeholders in order to 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 take these steps. Thanks. I think we'll take one last question and then wrap up. Um, which one should be considered the marketing authorization holder? Since in some countries it's the manufacturer, in others it is the local legal representative. Olaf, do you want to take that one? Yeah, at least I can start and then I might uh, need some input from someone else. But uh, if we look at interpret this question right from the listener is that um, if we look at the PHP ID for instance then we don't actually use have the MAH in there but of course we look at the uh, manufacturing holder a specific product in a specific country you know when we are trying to figure out what kind of PHP it should have but then it's grouped and then uh, the same PHP ID can be linked to several uh, of the PHP IDs. Um, and so in that case, we don't use it. But if we look at Hoodrug, uh, it's a bit tricky, of course, uh, because it's also, as we come back to the regulators, uh, in some cases, we get what we think is the holder. It might be really the manufacturer and not always that easy to to figure out exactly um, and it's um, yeah it's hard to really say that but um, for the PHP ID the IDMP it shouldn't really be that case anyone wants Thanks. to ship in 
Yeah, no, but it, it is a big debate and, and we, like Ole says, we, we always struggle with this when, when we work, we who drag. So it's important to, to get the right source uh, for the information. And that is one of the things that we work a lot with uh, to get the right information from the different countries. Uh, but um, I wouldn't say that it's easy, no. <laughs> Thank you, all, well, all four of you for taking the time to share your expertise with us today and answering so many questions from the audience. I think we'll end there. Uh, thanks to all of you for tuning in and asking all these interesting questions. We're sorry we couldn't get to them all, but if you still have queries, you can find more information on the IDMP standards on UMC's website. So do go there to learn more. You can also download handouts of the presentations that were shown today here in GoToWebinar and the recording of the session will also be available later on the UMC website. Um, we will send around a short survey after this webinar, so please take a few moments to tell us what you thought of the event that really helps us improve for future webinars. And with that, I wish you a good day or a good evening and thanks again for joining us today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.